I'm Mr. Esty, and we're back with some high quality statistics here. So this is correlation between two variables. And this is specifically aimed at the unit three project in my class, where we are trying to find the correlation between college acceptance rates and some kind of explanatory variable. In this case, I've decided to use graduation rate as my explanatory variable. I decided to limit my search to just uh, private colleges that give four-year bachelor's degrees in my area. I live in Philadelphia, so I'm just looking at the surrounding states, Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, Washington, D.C., uh, Delaware, New Jersey, etc. So I have 50 college, and I'm only looking, excuse me, I'm only looking at rural and small town colleges as well. So I have, right here, I have 50 colleges that fit my criteria. It turned out that's that's exactly how many I have. And I have them all listed here. I went to the National Center for Education Statistics, NCES.gov, and I went to their college search page, and I found these statistics, and I have them in a spreadsheet here. So I have the college and university name. That's not going to be a variable. That would be a categorical variable. And correlation only cares about quantitative variables. They only care about numbers. So this is here for the humans, but it's not going to be necessary for calculating correlation. What I have as my real data are the graduation rates of each college, which I'm using as my explanatory variable, and the acceptance rates for each college. So this is how many students graduate in four years with some degree, and this is what percentage of students who apply to this school get accepted. So what we're gonna do here is very simple. We just wanna know how well these two things correlate, and that's very simple. I have, I've already labeled that I'm gonna put correlation right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in a formula equals coro, C-O-R-R-E-L. So that tells me that I'm gonna look for the correlation coefficient, the Pearson R, and I'm going to put a parentheses, and now I'm gonna put in my data. And I'm just gonna put in a range of data. I'm gonna put in my response variable first. It doesn't matter because correlation doesn't care what order you put in the data. Correlation doesn't care about explanatory or response variables. However, later on in this project, we're going to look at a lot of things that do care about explanatory and response variables. And in all of the Google Sheets formulas that deal with explanatory and response variables, you put the explanatory variable second. You put the response variable first. So you go y first, x second. That's confusing to anyone who's used to algebra, where x always goes first. That's okay. We are just going to have to remember it. So I put this in. So I, what I've done here is I've put in my first range, which is from C2 to C51, and my second range, which is from B2 to B51. And Google Sheets has helpfully spat out a correlation coefficient for us, which is negative 0.076 and some other numbers. So I look at this and right away I can see, hey, that's interesting. That's a negative correlation. So what that means is, that doesn't mean that it's a weak correlation necessarily. It means that the acceptance rate goes down as graduation rate grow, goes up. And intuitively that makes sense, right? It makes sense that a school with a higher graduation rate might also have a lower acceptance rate. That could make sense for two different reasons. Either because a quote-unquote good school has a higher graduation rate and therefore more people want to go there, which makes the which means they have to reject more people. So if you've got if you're graduating most of your students, like Bard College over here, um, then probably people are more likely to want to go to your school. And then that means a lot of people apply and you have to reject more of them and you get a lower acceptance rate. Or possibly it's the opposite. Maybe 
because remember, correlation does not imply causation. Maybe it's not that higher graduation rates lead to lower acceptance rates. It could be something different. Um, maybe it's that higher, uh, lower acceptance rate means that you're more choosy about your students and you're only picking the students who are good enough and motivated enough and, and prepared enough to graduate. And so you're weeding out the students who would have failed and they don't even get to go, right? So that's especially possible with schools down here like um, Haverford or Swarthmore, which are very selective schools. And you got to figure if you can get into Haverford or you can get into Swarthmore, you're probably not going to fail out of college. Like the, 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 a lot of the test was already done simply by getting admitted. Now, I've just talked a lot about correlation, but you also notice that this is a correlation coefficient of zero of negative 0 0.076, that's actually a very small number. Remember that a correlation under 0.5, or in this case, that's greater than negative 0.5, is considered weak. This is an extremely weak correlation. So while I was making up reasons why, why this, why, you know, higher graduation rates might lead to lower acceptance rates or vice versa. Actually, it looks like these aren't correlated at all. It looks like there's almost no correlation whatsoever. And it looks like graduation rates and acceptance rates are all over the map here. So that's important. I have a very, what I have here is a very, very weak negative correlation. Weak negative linear association right here.